Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Let's Get Real with Michelle. So today we are going to be starting our debt series. I think it's so important to address debts because there are so many people in debt in the UK generally and it's such a big issue. We're going to be looking at, you know, priority debts um, predominantly for, for this series and then we're just going to be looking at debts in general. So I just got some stats um, from BBC in December 2019. They estimated that the average household debt in the UK is £9,400. So this does not include mortgages. So I mean pretty much everybody you know I'm sure has a lease, you know, we've got credit cards. You might think oh it's just 500 or whatever. The fact is it's still a debt. Um, but if you're if you're in debt and you are able to pay your debt, then that's that's absolutely fine. There's, there isn't an issue. It's more for people who are struggling to pay debts. Um, you know that we'll be looking at what options are available and what enforcement actions can be taken by the creditors. Um, so the focus on this video is going to be looking at priority debts. So as discussed in the last video, where you have priority bills, obviously if those don't get paid, then you are going to be owing priority debt. So we're looking at things like court fines, um, council tax arrears, TV license. I mentioned in the last video why this is a priority. I'm sure that probably surprised a few people. Um, child maintenance. So if you're the non-resident parent and you're having to pay for your child so the, to, the, to the parent the child lives with, um, that's a priority because, you know, the ch child maintenance service are lethal. They, they do not play. So, um, you know, they, they will be deducting from your earnings. Um, only 60% of your earnings are protected when you have child maintenance arrears, so they can take up to 40% of your income. For some people, you know, rent or mortgage could be something like 20 or 30% of your income. How, how do you manage to live? So they're a priority. If you need to pay them, please absolutely do. Gas and electric, I mentioned before, if you are paying monthly or if you're paying quarterly in instalments, then that's a priority because there's a risk of disconnection. Income tax. Uh, national insurance, VAT, if you have to pay any of those, so if you're self-employed or not on a pay-as-you-earn pay scheme, um, those are a priority. It's very rare for the, the HMRC to actually prosecute or to send people to prison, but they do have the ability to do so, so please bear that in mind. Um, you know, mortgage, rent arrears, we've already discussed, you could be made homeless if, if you don't pay that. Um, higher purchase agreements for essential goods, so obviously if you don't pay those, they can come and repossess those goods and so you would lose them. That's why they're a priority. Now, debts to the DWP, Department for Works and Pensions or the HMRC, they're not typically classed as priority debts. However, I'm grouping them as a priority um, purely because they have more powers than your standard creditors. So if you had credit card debts and you didn't pay them, they could get you, take you to court and get a county court judgment. However, if you had a DWP debt, they, they don't need to do any of that. They just apply for something called a direct earnings attachment. You just get a letter in the post saying, we are going to start deducting X percentage from your benefits or from your earnings. And that's it. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. So before I launch into this, guys, I just want to have, go into my disclaimer again, just to let you know, I am not regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority to give debt advice in England, which you have to be. Um, so just wanted to sort of put that out there guys, please do your own due diligence and check that the information that I am giving you is actually accurate to your circumstances. Um, I just want to say guys, if anybody is in a debt emergency situation, please, 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 you need to seek help. There is so much help out there. There are so many organisations that offer you free independent advice. I'll put a link in below to the Money Advice Service accredited organisations that you can contact. So if you have any court action pending, if you've got bailiffs pending, if you're um, disconnection, eviction pending, anything like that, please, I think you should seek advice. It's very important. There are things that they can do for you that you're probably not aware of. You know, they can speak to your creditors for you. Um, they can look at insolvency options if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in. So please, I would suggest, I would really urge you to, to get advice if you are struggling. Right, so our focus today is going to be on council tax debt. The reason I've chosen this as the one to look at for today is because I would say about 95% of my clients over the past nine or so years have had council tax arrears along with rent arrears, which is really quite disturbing. Um, but what I would say is if you are struggling to pay your council tax, or if you currently have council tax arrears, I will suggest that you just run through these checks that I'm gonna go through now. 
just to make sure that you aren't missing anything or that there aren't any discounts or exemptions that are applied to you. So the first thing I'm going to say is hopefully you have by now checked whether you're eligible for any council tax reduction. The second thing that I would say is um, you want to check if your council will let you pay your council tax over a 12 month period as opposed to a 10 month period. So as many of you might know, council tax is paid from April to March of the following year. So this is 2020, council tax will, your council tax bill will be from April 2020 till March uh, 2021. But what the council automatically do is when they send you the bill, they send you the bill so it ends in January of 2021. So you're actually paying over a 10 month period. So what this means is that you pay larger in months, but you finish paying two months earlier. If you're struggling to pay, I would suggest you just contact the council and you, ex you explain your situation to them and they will be able to tell you whether they can extend it the further two months. This just means that it splits the payments over the 12 months and so you pay less. I am aware that some councils will require you to probably pay by direct debit, um, but it's worth checking out. The other thing I would say is to check whether you're getting any discounts. So if you're a single person, in a, if it's a single household, or you're a single person with small children under 18, then you might be able to get a 25% discount. This should be automatically added to your bill if the council know you are a single person. So if you were part of a couple and your partner is now moved out, and you haven't notified the council and they haven't notified the council, then the council would not know that you're a single person, they will be charging you for 100%. So please check with the council or just have a look at your bill if you still have it to hand to make sure that the 25% discount is still applied. The other circumstances where 25% discount might apply is if you are living with someone who has been diagnosed as having a severe mental impairment. So this is classified as SMI. So for the council tax purposes, um, if the person has SMI and is living in the house or with somebody else, then they will be exempt. So what this means is that you will be classed as a single person. Um, the other time this might happen is if you are a student. So full-time students are exempt from council tax. Um, so if you're living with a full-time student, so if you're part of a couple once again, or if you've got a child who's at university who's a full-time student and you're a single parent, then that child is exempt for council tax purposes. You will need to let the council know that person is a full-time education. You will probably need to provide evidence to them of that. And then you would get your 25% discount as well. The final thing I wanted to run through is something that lo lots of people don't know about. It's something called the second adult rebate. So if you live in England, which you share a home with somebody who's on a low income, who doesn't pay rent to you and he's not liable for the council tax, then you might be able to claim second adult rebate. So I would just suggest that you contact your council just to find out if this is something that would be applicable to you. Now I'm gonna run through the council tax process, only relevant to England. Unfortunately, I'm not familiar with the Scottish and the Welsh system, so I can't give you any information on those. Um, but I'm liaised with enough councils in England to understand that this is the generic process. So if you've missed a council tax payment, you are officially in arrears. Um, what I want to clear up about council tax, first of all, is if you are named on the council tax with somebody else or more than two people are named on the council tax, then you are all jointly and severally liable for that council tax. What that means is if one person doesn't pay, the other has to pay all of it. So you can't ever say, I only owe half of the council tax because I, you know, somebody else lived there. That's not how council tax works. So let's just assume you have been unable to pay the council tax and you've missed a payment. What would normally happen is a council would send you a reminder letter and say you need to pay within so many days. If you are struggling to pay, please just give the council a call because this is early days. You can just call them, explain your situation to them, and you might be able to come to some sort of an arrangement that's affordable to you. Great. If you are not able to do that, which is probably the situation that most people find themselves in, because what might happen is you might say, oh, I won't pay the council tax this month. Um, I'll pay it next month. But then circumstances haven't changed. Things have got worse. You still can't pay it. And so next month comes, you miss another payment. Then... Unfortunately, the council will probably be writing to you again, and this time um, they will be saying, 
Now we want you to pay everything you owe us in full. So not only do we want you to pay in full, you have now lost your right to pay in installments. Okay, so what this means is, for example, this is September 2020 and council tax payments would have started in April 2020. Assuming you have been unable to pay anything whatsoever in that time, what they would be saying now is we want you to pay us, say for example, council tax is £100 a month, we want you to pay us the £500 arrears since April, plus we now want you to pay us the £700 till March, assuming you're paying over a 12 month period. Obviously, who's going to have £1,200 to pay? Otherwise, you would have just paid the £100 per month, but that's how they do it. You can't pay that. So the next step is they're going to go, right, we are going to be summoning you to magistrate court. OK, what I want to say, guys, is at any point, you should please contact the council and see if there's anything that they can do to help you. They tend to be quite lenient if you contact them at the beginning, because it's showing that you're actually willing and you're interested in trying to sort the situ situation out. The later on it gets, the more difficult it is then to set up an arrangement because the council, as far as they're concerned, will think you're not interested, okay? The other thing to say is if the council, if you come to an arrangement with the council and you are due to pay council tax on a particular date, please make sure that you pay either before the due date or you pay on the due date because what most people do is say for example you're due to pay on the first people would say oh i'll pay on the second because i get paid on the second well most of these things are computer triggered so if you do not pay on the first the computer picks it up and says oh there's a default person hasn't paid then another letter gets sent out to you it classes as a default so if it's possible at all you need to try and make sure you are paying on the day that's been given to you Furthermore, if at any point you find that you are struggling and you are unable to make payments, I would also suggest that you start paying what you can afford to pay. So if you had to pay £100 but you only had £50, do not not pay anything because this is what people do. They go, oh, I can't afford the 100 so I'm not going to pay anything. In the next month, now you owe, you owe £200. What you should do is pay 50 so next month you now owe 150 as opposed to 200 pounds now we're going to assume that you obviously still cannot pay the council tax what can the council do okay next stage is you're probably going to get a summons now this is going to be probably a brightly colored letter because the council are going to want this letter to catch your attention and this is going to be a letter telling you that you have been summoned to the magistrate court at a particular day and a particular time um, for a liability order. Now, what does this mean? A liability order is basically what the council needs to obtain in order to take further enforcement action. So without this liability order, they really can't do anything. So effectively, they're going before magistrates and saying, Joe Bloggs lives at this address and they are the person liable to pay council tax. So we need a liability order to take further enforcement action. Now, usually when you get summoned, you do not need to attend court. So the letter will actually say you don't need to attend court. But if you're not sure, please get help and check. When they go to get the liability order, the reason it's not important for you to attend is because they just want the liability order. So unless you're actually going to be making a payment, your going there might be pointless. But once again, guys, please have a look on the letter. It usually says you do not need to attend. OK. Now, once you get this letter, you can still contact the council to try and negotiate an arrangement with them. This is called a special arrangement. Some councils might accept. Most councils will say no. The reason they would refuse at this point is because as far as they're concerned, they've given you enough options to set up an arrangement, number one. Number two, they actually want to have the upper hand at this point because with the liability order, once they get the liability order and you then don't pay, then they can start enforcement action. But if they delay getting the liability order, then they've lost their opportunity to take enforcement action against you. Another thing to note is the liability order will come with a fee. So the fee varies depending on your local council. Sometimes it's not very much and some um, councils it's extortionate. But you will then also have to pay that fee. So that then also goes onto your debt, which isn't very helpful because you're already in debt. Once the liability order has been obtained, what I would still suggest to do is to call the council and see if you can set up a, a special arrangement with them. 
bearing in mind guys because they have the liability order now you really can't afford to default because if you do then they move on to enforcement action now we're going to look at what enforcement action options are available to the council the thing that they tend to do the most is to pass it on to bailiffs remove their goods from their property sell it so we can get our money so that's one option the other thing they can do is they can apply for deductions from your benefits or deductions from your earnings if you own property the council can apply for a charging order you would have to owe the council a substantial amount of money for them to consider this option because it's an expensive option for them the other thing they could do is they can look at petitioning for your bankruptcy once again you'd have to owe them over £5,000. So in England, any creditor you owe over £5,000 can petition for your bankruptcy. Then the last thing is imprisonment. It is still possible in England to go to prison for not paying your council tax. This was abolished in Wales in April of last year, but it's still very much a thing in England. so what we are going to be looking at now is assuming the liability order has been obtained by the council and they have now passed your debt on to the bailiffs so just to clear a few things off bailiffs are now called enforcement agents but for the purpose of this video I'm just going to continue calling them bailiffs because most of us do um, and who are they so they are actually a private firm of bailiffs um, and the council will normally instruct them to collect the money that is owed to the council on their behalf. The aim of the bailiff is to purely take control of your goods, to remove goods, sell them at auction and raise money to clear off your debt. Bailiffs must be certified to be a bailiff. It is possible to check whether their current certification is valid. So I will put the link in how to do that. So if you've got any letters from bailiffs, you can just put their details in and you can check whether they are registered. So when the council obtain a liability order, they pass the debt onto the bailiffs. The bailiffs will then send you out an enforcement notice. They should give you seven clear days that they intend to visit your property. Now, when they send a letter out, they can then charge a compliance fee. This is £75. So they can charge £75 compliance fee for each debt they are collecting on, okay? So if you have three accounts with the council for council tax arrears, the bailiffs can charge 75 pounds for each debt. That's a lot of money considering you're already in debt. It doesn't seem fair, but that's how it works, right? So when you get the, the letter saying they're gonna give you seven clear days, they can then visit the property after the seventh day. Now, when they visit the property, when they physically come to your property, the bailiffs can now charge an enforcement fee, which is £235. This one is a little bit different because they can't charge you £235 for each account. They can just charge you £235 for the visit, okay? So, what happens? Assuming a bailiff has turned up at your door, what can you do? First things first, you do not have to let them in. That's the most important thing I'm gonna be saying today is you do not have to let the bailiffs in, okay? It doesn't matter what they tell you, you know, we're gonna get locksmiths and come and break your door down. Whatever they say, you do not have to let them in if you have never let them into the property before, okay? So bailiffs can force entry if they have been in your property before, so you have let them in before, they have had a control of goods agreement with you and you broke it, right? So if you haven't let them in, but you did sign a control of goods agreement and then you didn't keep up to that, they just need to give you two days notice, two clear days notice, and then they can come back into the property or come back into the property, should I say. Okay. Now, please also know, just because I said they do not have to, you do not have to let them in, they can take goods that belong to you that's outside of the property. So if you've got a car on the drive, they can absolutely levy that, right? Very important. Most people will, 
move their car away from the property, but they can, if they find your vehicle on a public road, they are allowed to take it. Very important. So the best option, if you have a lock garage, a garage that you can lock your car in, please just put it in there. Or you can actually put it on somebody else's drive because that's private property. They cannot take that. Okay. So if you must talk to the bailiffs, I would suggest you close, you come outside, close the door behind you and you go speak to them. So they're not allowed to force their way in or anything like that. But most bailiffs do have cameras on them these days. So I mean, that's quite good. Um, bailiffs are no longer allowed to come in through windows and come in. Through, I mean, there, there used to be some unscrupulous action, but a lot of that stops now. What I will also say is bailiffs can come in if they gain peaceful entry. So what this means is if your door is open and they pull the handle down and they walk in, that's classed as peaceful entry. So if you know you've got a bailiff letter, don't be leaving your door open. Because if you do, the bailiffs can walk in and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. So they can't force entry by breaking the door down, but they can walk in peacefully. Alright guys, so we're going to assume for a second that you've actually let the bailiffs into the property. So what can happen now? What can they do? So the bailiffs are obviously there to remove goods, but what if I told you they actually don't want to remove goods because it's not going to benefit them in any way? Um, you know, you can imagine how many people they have on their books that they have to go around to to say we've come to remove goods. Where are they going to store the goods that they remove? Um, so what they really want to do is they, they want you to sign a controlled goods agreement. Um, what this means is they're going to look around your property and they're going to list items that they think are worth selling. They are going to then get you to sign this document or will try and get you to sign this document um, to agree to pay them X amount of money. So you, the, the items can remain in your property, but they control the goods now. So technically the goods now belong to them. So you can't, it's, it's a criminal offense at that point to get rid of the goods, okay? So what would happen is most people, obviously the goods have sentimental value to all of us. Things in our homes are important to us. And so we would probably sign anything at that point, but it might not be something that you can afford to pay because you're frightened that they're going to remove your goods. Now, the other thing I want you to remember at this point is, um, although the goods in our properties are worth a lot to us, but how much would they actually be worth to somebody outside? So if you were owing a thousand pounds, just as an example on council tax, but you know, all the items that you have, if they were gonna sell it and only get 300 pounds, it's not worth the hassle for them. So that's just something to bear in mind when you're negotiating with bailiffs. So assuming you did sign this control of goods agreement and you unfortunately cannot keep up with it, as is the case, because usually they're ridiculous amounts of money that people just cannot afford to pay. Um, the bailiffs will have to give you two clear days notice and then they can come back to the property to either remove the goods or to lock it up on your premises. But once again, remember what I just said, do they really want to take the goods away? Okay. There are certain things that they cannot remove. They're not allowed to remove. They can't take your clothes. They can't take your bedding. They have to leave a seat for each member of the household. They can't take essential items like your fridge, your cooker, washing machine, microwave. Um, they can't take tools, your books. If you have any equipment or if you have a car um, that is necessary for you to personally use to do your job, um, up to the value of £1,350, they cannot take those either. They should not or cannot take items belonging to a third party. I said should not because the third party would need to prove that the items belong to them. Now, obviously, this is quite difficult unless the person has got maybe uh, some sort of contract or agreement where they can show that they took out, you know, they, they, they paid this off. Um, or if they've got a receipt, but of course a receipt wouldn't necessarily have your name on it. Um, my partner could have bought it and I'd say it's mine. Um, if you don't have a receipt, it's possible to provide them with a sworn statement, which is also known as a statutory declaration. Right, so moving on from the initial contact with the bailiffs, you now have two options. So you can either choose to deal with the bailiffs and negotiate with them to pay the council tax, or you can choose to ignore them. So we're just gonna run through what could happen in either scenario. If you decided you wanted to negotiate with the bailiffs to pay the council tax arrears up, just 
bear in mind you are almost agreeing to paying the £75 compliance fee along with the £235 enforcement fee. So whatever payments you make to the bailiffs, so assuming you agree to pay them £120 per month, um, a percentage will go to the bailiffs first and then they will then send the rest on to the council. So effectively the bailiffs fees get paid first. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, and then you can start paying them and obviously if you then default then they can come back out and the circle continues so lots of people do get into agreements with bailiffs and pay them off successfully so if that's you great do that um the other option is or it's not really an option for some people because they just can't afford to pay um but the other thing is some people choose to ignore the bailiffs and so they don't pay them and i'll explain what happens if you do if you don't do that in a second um but bear in mind if you agree to do this then you just have to know that the bailiffs obviously might keep returning they have a 12 month window so for a lot of people this is quite a stressful time and i don't think many people want bailiffs to keep returning every three months or periodically to their property um people are living in fear of the bailiffs um so you know this is something to bear in mind if you choose to ignore them However, the benefits of doing this, if that's the right word to use, is that then um, the council, after a while, if they can't get any money through the bailiffs, they will then recall the debts from the bailiffs and then they will be looking at the next stage of enforcement. So what this means at this point is that the £75 compliance fee and the £235 enforcement fee are removed from your, from your debt. So literally all that's left is a council tax debt at this point. I would urge you to contact the council and once again negotiate with them try and sort something out even if you can't come to an arrangement where, where you pay formally what i will tell you to do is to start making voluntary payments of what you can reasonably afford so whatever is affordable to you the reason you want to do this is because it shows that you are actually trying to pay the debt so the council may look at the other enforcement options that we talked about so generally they might consider something like an attachment of earnings or attachment to benefits that tends to be the second go-to um if for example you're not on benefits because that's sometimes easier for them to get access to that and you're working but they can't get hold of you you're not responding to the paperwork because they need you to tell them where they're working so they'll send a form from court that you must complete some people don't complete that. how you know what what are they going to do so the next step that they might consider at that point is a summons. So they might look at a committal's hearing. Um, so you'd probably get a letter saying they've summoned you to court once again for a committal hearing. And at this point, they are going to be considering prison as an option. Now, before they can send you to prison, they will have to have what's called a means inquiry. So this is where your income and expenditure comes in, guys. You will have to provide a budget. Um, and tell them this is what's coming in, this is what's going out, and this is why I've been unable to pay. They will look at what assets you have and what, what your circumstances are in general. Um, just two points to make, or a quick point to make. The council, or you, you will not be sent to prison unless they can prove one of two things. The first is that you've been willfully refusing to pay. So this applies to people who just point blank said, I'm not paying council tax, and yes, those people do exist. Um, so the second people are the type of people who they, they could say they could prove if they can prove that you have culpably neglected to pay so what this means is if you've had the money but you've been spending it on less important things so this is why it's so important to know your priority bills versus your non-priority bills because what people do is they say oh the private man's knocking at the door I've got to pay them they're not a priority okay so if you ever find yourself at a means hearing or a committals hearing what they will be looking at is have you culpably neglected to pay your council tax did you have the means to pay it but you were paying something else so all of those are the sort of factors that they will be considering when looking at whether prison should be an option okay so at this hearing what might happen is the magistrates might just say okay we now need you to pay x amount of money per month because we can see you can afford it um if you don't pay that amount of money then what would happen is they will get you back to court and then you can be imprisoned for up to three months but guys just to wrap up i just want to say if you are in any of these stages and you're not sure what's happening you don't know where to get help please have a look in the description below i will just provide some links to organizations you can contact 
Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate your time. I just wanted to say quickly, if you have got any value from watching this video whatsoever, please like and subscribe. It really helps with the algorithm. If this information is not relevant to yourself personally, please share it with people who might find it beneficial. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.